Google Ads Business Information Assets are a type of ad extension that really serves two purposes. First, it provides transparency. If a user is not familiar with your brand, they'll get a better understanding of who you are. And second, it provides better visual assets to your search ads. So in this video, we will show you where you can set up business information, and there may be a few hurdles depending on what type of account you have, and then we'll show you the levels where you can set up business information assets. I am in the campaign view in our demo Google Ads account, and all of your ad assets will live under the campaign view. If you don't have your left-hand navigation expanded, just highlight over campaigns, and there we see assets. We'll click on the dropdown, and then assets again. As I said in the intro, there are two main business information assets, business name and business logo. If you've been running accounts for a while, most likely you're fine and you will see these in the account. However, if you're either brand new to Google Ads or you haven't run campaigns in a while, you may not see these two assets right away. That's because there are some specific requirements. First is that you have to have spend in search campaigns within the last 28 days. And second, and this is the biggest hurdle, you must have gone through the advertiser verification process. Now we did have a video a while ago about advertiser verification. I will admit it is a little bit outdated, but if you want a better understanding, you can check out the video up above. But to verify your account, you have to go to the billing section, which I know seems like a weird place, but right next to my mouse, there we see advertiser verification. Michelle and I have run ads before, so we've already gone through the process, but if you're new, there will be a button that just says start the verification process. Make sure that you finish all the completed tasks, answer some specific questions. We had to submit documents to prove that we own the business that we're trying to verify and a few other things. After we did submit the information, answered all the questions, it took about a day for us to get verified. When we work with clients to help them get verified, sometimes we see verification within a couple hours. Others, it takes a couple days. But one more sidetrack on advertiser verification before we jump back into the business information assets is if I come to actual search results, I just typed in QuickBooks, and here we see the two business information assets. There's their image, that's the logo, and then they have Intuit QuickBooks as the business name. They have this because they're verified, and advertiser verification adds this little more menu to your search ads. If you click on it, it gives more transparency about who the company is that is advertising to you. All that's part of the verification process, and all of this is necessary in order to add these business information assets. Okay, coming back to the assets page within our account, we're going to look at setting each of these up. First, let's just go in order and choose business name. I'm going to click on the blue plus button, and first we see that there are certain levels where we can add business information assets. By default, it's going to go to the account level, and that's typically what you need. So you can set it up once and it'll apply to all of your search ads. However, maybe you just created one ad account and you have multiple brands or sister companies advertising within the same account. If that's the case, you can choose campaign level and then add your business information assets to whichever campaign applies for each brand. I'm gonna cancel out of this and stick with just account level. Okay, now you may see that there's a little bit blurred out. That's because when we verified our business, we used our legal name. Believe it or not, our legal name is not Paid Media Pros. However, we still consider it our brand name. So if you look at the description under business name, whatever we input here within 25 characters has to match the URL or our verified advertiser name. Luckily, we do own PaidMediaPros.com, so I am allowed to use it. And there we see the preview updated. That is where our business name will live. And like any other ad asset, you can go and preview and look at different ad sizes and different devices, but this one is pretty clear cut. So I'm just going to save it. And of course, we've run into this before with several other clients it's saying the business name is irrelevant because we use the URL and not the legal name that we had for advertiser verification. So because of that, we did have to work with support, dispute it, get it approved. And that's something that Michelle and I would have to do here too. But you don't need to see that in the video. Let's just look at business logo. Once again, click on the blue plus button. We see the same levels, and yes, there will be another level. We'll talk about that one soon, but click on business logo. For other display ads and other demos, we've already uploaded an image. What we saw in the QuickBooks example, they do make it into a circle, but we figured that a nice square image is good to use. So you don't have to crop it, but once you upload it, you can crop your images and edit them a little bit. And we see our logo's there, a little small. Possibly I would use an image that takes out the wording so it's just the logo, make that a little bit bigger so it stands out more. 
it would be easier to see, so you might need to play around with it a little bit. But other than that, I'm going to save. No issues here, even though it says Pay Media Pros too, so thanks for making it easy, Google. Now there are a few more ways that we can implement the business information assets. Let me jump to another tab. I'm in the ads view for a specific campaign. Whether you're creating a new ad or you want to edit a specific ad, when you're going through creating or editing an ad, you can scroll past all the copy and image assets. And here we see the option to add your business name and logo at the ad level. Now I can't think of many examples where you would need to do it at the ad level. Even if you are advertising multiple brands within the same account, Google Ads has a strict policy that you cannot advertise two different domains within the same ad group. So like we wouldn't be able to advertise to paymediapros.com and paymediapro.com, whatever. And your ads live within your ad group. So maybe you're trying to do business logo testing at the ad level, fine, but I don't really think that's gonna have a, such a massive impact on the account. Here is where you would go at the ad level if you have a very specific reason why you need to do it. I'm not gonna save this, but you would just scroll down, save your ad, whether it's new or you're editing it. Now let's look at an example for Performance Max. And in this tab, I'm in a Performance Max setup because you'll be able to look and adjust business information assets at the asset group level. It looks similar to a responsive search ad because your Performance Max campaigns will run on search, but scrolling down, there we see logos. So here's an example how we're testing two different ones. And then there's the business name. I didn't touch anything. I didn't add this before coming to this tab. Google already pulled this information. And for a few different reasons. One, we already have them set up at the account level before I got to this tab. So it's easy for Google to pull this. However, there is a thing called brand guidelines for performance max campaigns. Going all the way back up, if I did want to launch this, I'd have to change this to HTTPS. But for performance max, Google can look at your final URL to pull information like business name to pull multiple logo assets like we saw down below and other things like brand colors. So when they're building out the display portion of it, it matches. But brand guidelines, like I said, does cover your name and your logo. So in the case of Performance Max at the asset group level, that's why we may see different things here than what we set up manually in the assets section. Now the same rules about advertiser verification still apply if you're using it for Performance Max. So I know I said earlier, if you're trying to set it up manually, you might not see those two options, but if you're doing it at the ad or asset group level, these functions may not be here until you have advertiser verification in place. No matter what, that should always be one of the first steps you do when creating your Google Ads account. But heading back to the asset section one more time, hopefully you know this already, but just wanna clarify in terms of reporting. We see several columns here already, but you'll be able to go to your columns, modify them, choose whatever metrics you wanna look at, and really just to see the impact these assets are having compared to the average results that your search ads typically see. You might not be able to test out your business name because really it is what it is when you've gone through advertiser verification. However, you can test out multiple business logos. Like the example I gave earlier, maybe removing the words will make a difference to make our logo bigger. Maybe the white background is not a great idea. We should create something with more color to it to make our search ad pop out. So we can test a few things, but really, that's all there is to it, to business information assets. If you have any other questions on how to use them or set them up, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.